Hi, on NPI brought to you by DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada looks at new product introductions. NPI from Raspberry Pi. What is this? I know, it rhymes. Uh, all right, this is like hot off the press. I was actually going to do a different NPI. Yeah. But I bumped it because. We pivoted. We pivoted because at the last minute when I checked DigiKey's website, they had <gasps> the RP2350 chips in stock, which they didn't have last week. Um, so it's very exciting. This is the update to the RP2040. Uh, here's just you know the data sheet front page for the 2040. For those who remember, this was released you know January ish 2021. It was a dual core Ar Ar ARM Cortex M0 Plus, so it didn't have an FPU, but you know it was like a pretty fast processor at 130 megahertz. Um, one of the things that was nice about it, it had a lot of RAM. Um, you did have to have offboard QSPI memory. Um, it had UART, SPI, I squared C, uh, PWM timers, USB. And uh, this thing called PIO, which was kind of like a weird, like, what is this? Maybe you can use it to drive NeoPixels. But now it's everybody's uh, favorite off-Broadway um, off peripheral, right? It's not like a standard. It doesn't come with um, any other chips, but it's um, a, a feature favorite of the RP2 series. So um, what's great is uh, never one to rest on their laurels. They've released the rp 2350. So this is the upgrade to the 2040. Um, the biggest things um, that were upgraded were the chips from a Cortex M0 to a Cortex M33. This is an ARM V8 processor, so it's um, the generation after the M3 and the M4. Um, dual core runs at 150 megahertz, uh, doubles the amount of on-chip RAM, so it's now a little bit more than half a meg. Um, still use QSPI flash, but now you can use PS RAM. Uh, the low power support is much, much better. Um, uh, better security features, and they had a big um, a hacking contest to you know, yeah. verify those hacking features as well. Um, and uh, an extra PIO machine. So I think they, the previous one had, I don't want to call them state machines, they're um, like runtime whatever devices. So the RP2040 had two, this one has three. HSTX, and what I think is very neat is um, now comes in two chip sizes, not just a QFN60, but also a QFN80. The QFN80 is, is personally my favorite. Um, still has the two UARTs, two SPI, two I2C, and PWM. Oh, also, the QFN80 has um, eight analog inputs, not just four. So another improvement. Um, overall, it's like a nice big bump. It's familiar for people who are, uh, know the RP2040. Um, but it adds a little bit more. Um, the Pico SDK is back compatible. A lot of like people's PIO code is going to be back compatible, but more capabilities. Um, so like I said, much more RAM. Another thing that's really neat is you've got um, Cortex M33s, or if you want, you can try out the dual RISC-V processors. I will say this is more sort of like experimental exploratory if you want to play with RISC-V. Um, you know, this is a low cost chip that is available. Um, whereas a, there's, to be honest, not a lot of risk five processors out there um, that are available and low cost and, um, you know, have a lot of really good peripherals. Um, one thing is, you know, if you want to try cross compiling your code to run on the risk five, you can either have it, the risk five running or the M33, you can't have both because they share the peripherals is um, the code runs a little bit slower cycle per cycle. And also your code will be a little bit bigger because ARM is just very good at having a compressed um, command set and risk five is not as much. So, you know, for the people who are interested, it's there. If you're not interested, just, you don't have to use it at all. Like the RP2040, you will need to have external NOR flash connected. You pick one megabyte up to 16 megabytes. Um, but what was really neat is you could also connect PS RAM and that you couldn't do that on the RP2040. And PS RAM is, um, pseudostatic RAM. It's RAM that's externally connected. So it connects over the QSPI pins. Obviously, it's not going to be as fast as the built-in SRAM, which is like instant one instruction access. Um, for PSRAM, you have to go off chip. And so there's like, you know, and you have to manage it and read pages at a time. Um, but it's a way to add two or even eight megabytes of SRAM for not a lot of money. Um, you can get SRAM chips um, on DigiKey for, you know, two bucks. You can add, uh, in this case, um, one megabyte of SRAM. 
Um, and you can pick, you know, again, there's one, two, eight mega, um, megabyte options available. And if you need like really big buffers and you don't need instantaneous one cycle access to it, um, it's a great way to, to like just add more memory, uh, for, especially for IoT. Another hardware um, improvement that was made is now there's an HSTX peripheral. Um, so this is like a general purpose high speed transmit. It's only transmit, you cannot receive. You could probably use it for a couple different things, but basically what it's designed for is to be used as DVI outlets. You can use this to drive eight lines differentially um, to create a DVI display. Just remember, you have to display from the built-in SRAM. So you can't use the PS RAM. So if you want a 320 by 240 display at two bytes, 16 bit per pixel, or VGA 640 by 480, but at eight bits per pixel, um, uh, eight bit color. Um, those are kind of your options. You can also go higher resolution, but you have to kind of start being tricky with how you generate your scan lines. Um, but we've used this um, successfully to drive DVI displays and it's it's super fun and you don't have to use a core PIO. You just need like DMA and um, a video buffer and SRAM. Uh, and, you know, could it drive uh, MIPI slash DSI displays? Probably. We haven't done it, but, you know, again, you would need the video buffer um, to drive the displays. Usually they're more than the VGA resolution. Um, as mentioned, one of the things we really like is there's, the 60 pin QFN, I will note, it is not pin compatible with the RP2040. It's very close to, but not quite. Um, there is a slightly different power supply setup. Just, you know, be careful. Don't, don't think you can just drop in this pin. What I do like is they made the center pad smaller so you can have vias um, and traces going underneath for easier routing, especially with the, that three volt power line. There's also the 80 pin QFN, my favorite because you could do the HSTX. Like I said, you've got eight analog inputs, tons of GPIO. Um, it's not that much bigger physically, but like you said, you know, like I said, 20 more GPIO, um, I think either 20 or 18 more GPIO, uh, pretty sweet. Okay, next up, um, just some things to watch out for. If you are laying out this board, there is a um, PDF for hardware layout, like a tutorial, and they kind of tell you here's the value you should use. If you want to use the low power buck converter that converts, I think, to 1.2 volts from whatever 3.3 volts you're giving it, um, you do need to lay out the inductor and the capacitors in a certain way. It's like, this is the way, not only that, but the inductor has to turn the right direction. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't found it to be that picky. I've never had yield issues, but <coughs> for best results, follow their recommendations. Also for the crystal, they really recommend using the Abercom ABM8272. Good news, it's available at DigiKey, it's in stock and it's not expensive. Um, so use that, that crystal is recommended for use with this chip. If you want some ideas on how to do layout and design, uh, we have our working example. Obviously, you know, they have their hardware PDF, follow that, but we also have our Feather and our Metro files online um, under an open source license. You can check them out. Of course, the Best and least expensive eval board you can possibly get is the $5 Pico 2. Um, it has the layout and design for the A version of the chip um, in the classic Pico format. So you know, for five bucks, you can basically get started with this chip instantaneously. It doesn't have PS RAM, it only has two megabytes of uh, flash. So if you want more than that, or maybe four megabytes of flash, if you need more than that, again, our Feather and Metro are available um, at DigiKey. And like I said, as of this, video, they have 3,400 in stock of the A um, in a reel, and I think they have 500 in stock of the B in a reel and 3,400. Basically, they have a lot in stock. I think right now it's only real quantity, but I expect that they'll offer cut tape very, very shortly. So um, check back probably by you know the end of tomorrow, the next day, you'll be able to get individual chips. Um, that'll be awesome for people who want to start designing with this hardware, especially that B chip, which uh, like I said, I think it's awesome. And um, the Pico only comes with the A. So if you want extra GPIO, uh, pick up the B version. Okay, and they have a little 30 second video. We're gonna play it.
Yeah.